It's impressive, right? Well, hold on tight, because today we're going to discuss a tower two times bigger. Hello everyone, I'm Theo, founder of Looking For, and today I'm standing in front of one of Chicago's most iconic towers, the John Hancock Center. It stands at nearly 457 meters tall. The John Hancock Tower was designed by Bruce Graham and the Chicago architecture firm SOM, which will design the fascinating tower we're going to see today in collaboration with Energy Vault. On today's agenda, a tower one kilometer high. If it were built, this structure would become the tallest building in the world, ahead of Dubai's Burj Khalifa Tower. However, beyond the feat of construction lies a practical reason to store a huge amount of energy from renewable sources. This innovative infrastructure would provide a large-scale storage solution to make renewable energy reliable regardless of the weather. To understand what would be nothing less than a revolution, I'm bringing you a special episode filmed on location as I travel to Chicago to interview one of the key players in this incredible project. I hope you enjoy this new format especially since this project comes at a crucial time for our societies. With the massive arrival of electric cars on the roads and the large-scale deployment of AI, demand for electricity has never been so high, a trend that's likely to increase in the coming years. And to meet this demand, polluting fossil fuels or nuclear power are currently being considered. Both of these energy sources have their drawbacks. For renewable energy such as wind and solar power to become a credible option, it must be possible to store it when weather conditions are unfavorable. This is where Energy Vault, a company founded in Switzerland in 2017, comes in. It's developed an innovative solution with remarkable potential, gravity energy storage in a tower. The system is based on the principle of pumped hydroelectricity. Broadly speaking, large solid blocks or water reservoirs are lifted to store potential energy, then lowered to release it. The technology itself had proven its worth, but integrating it into cities and infrastructure was more complicated to achieve. That was until Skidmore, Owings and Merrill, more commonly known as SOM, came along. Beyond its name, it is above all some of its accomplishments that speak to the widest audience. The firm is responsible for iconic skyscrapers such as the Willis Tower, One World Trade Center and even the Burj Khalifa. SOM's trademark has always been the fusion of architecture and structural engineering. So it's no surprise that in 2024, it announced an official partnership with Energy Vault. This is a first-rate collaboration that has given rise to an extraordinary project. To present it in the best possible light, I met one of SOM's managing partners, Adam Semmel, to get a sneak preview of this fascinating new technology. The collaboration with Energy Vault came about because my colleague Bill Baker, who's a consulting partner and structural engineer, has led the design of uh, many of the world's tallest buildings. He gave a lecture at Caltech 10, 12 years ago and stayed in touch with a professor there named Jose Andrade, who's been working with Energy Vault. And Jose had the idea of pulling us together, that our expertise SOM's expertise and Bill's knowledge in tall building structures could be helpful to Energy Vault, who is looking to increase the efficiency, buildability, scalability of their energy project uh, products. The potential for a transformative collaboration was obvious from the beginning. It wasn't until around 2023 that Professor Jose Andrade connected with Bill, Adam, and SOM, and the timing was no accident. Our grid has not really needed to grow substantially in the last 30 years. But now, with the advent of AI, and data centers, and onshoring manufacturing, there's a huge spike in um, energy demands uh, locally and globally, everywhere in the world. And basically, the whole world is competing to provide energy to unlock the AI infrastructure that we all know is transforming the economy very quickly. AI isn't only spiking our global demand for energy, it's also radically changing the economy. The seismic shifts AI is poised to make and the civilizational implications of those shifts hinge largely on our ability to harness the energy for them. Many leading voices, including OpenAI CEO Sam Altman and the Secretary General of the UN, Antonio Guterres, 
have spoken publicly on the imperative nature of renewable energy in the AI age. A typical AI data center eats up as much energy as 100,000 homes, Guterres recently warned. Without rapid innovation and continued investment, we risk missing the goals set by the UN of having tech giants power 100% of their data centers with renewable energy by 2030. Scientists agree that continuing to rely on traditional fossil fuels to power AI is unsustainable and could have disastrous environmental consequences. Energy is the bottleneck. And we can do that using fossil fuels. We can do that using nuclear. But if we want to unlock true renewables, like wind and solar, we need to be able to take that energy from when it's produced, when the sun is shining or the wind is blowing, to the site of the demand when it's in demand. And so you need an approach to load shifting that energy and you need a way to store it. 80% of all energy storage utilize gravity. So these are these large, what's called pumped hydro systems. Uh, so you'll hear the term PHS or pumped hydroelectric dams. Uh, we've been using these for well over 50 to 100 years in, in that range, where essentially you're um, looking at, in this case, using water uh, from an upper re reservoir or even from a, a, a large dam that creates a large body of water sitting at height and having the water traverse down. So under gravity and it turns a motor that then will generate and discharge electricity. And then that water is pumped, hence the term pumped hydro, back up to the top of the reservoir. So that's been around for a while. And so what we've done at Energy Vault is one of the basis of our innovations in storage technology had to do with developing gravity energy storage, but developing it in a way that it would be lower cost that didn't have the constraints of location, meaning you could build it anywhere, you could build a building, that you didn't disrupt wildlife ecosystems. And um, we've really focused on those things uh, to help make something uh, better and even, and even more sustainable, where we didn't have to use a lot of concrete, for example, to build a dam. Few have had a more keen understanding of it than Professor Jose Andrade, engineer Bill Baker, and Adam Semmel. Knowing the clock was ticking, the trio connected and soon formalized a partnership between Energy Vault and SOM and quickly got to work. As with any revolutionary new technology, step one was to engage directly with the mechanics of the technology itself. So this is um, a template design for a gravity energy storage battery in a tower. For reference, the model shown here by Semmel is for a tower that would be 600 meters high and 60 meters wide. That 10 to 1 ratio is expected to be consistent across towers of various heights. The cylindrical shape of a soda can distributes force evenly, making it difficult to crush from top or bottom. Gravity batteries rely on the same principle to attain very high structural integrity without using a lot of material. But gravity-based energy storage has far more to offer than just material efficiency. For starters, gravity batteries are also more geographically flexible. You could imagine it out in the middle of the desert with uh, a solar field or a wind farm. And what we're doing is we're taking the power that's generated when the wind is blowing, when the sun is shining, and storing it so that it can be deployed later when it's needed. We can pair it with that uh, renewable energy development in a remote location, and we can design the tower uh, to fit in with its surroundings using local natural materials, colors, shapes, and forms. If you imagine it deployed in more of an urban context, then you think about it very differently. It's part of a city skyline, perhaps starting to integrate other uses into, uh, we start to think of it as a real estate. And energy storage is one of the components of that real estate value. Maybe we would start to cross-purpose it within the structure by integrating housing or data centers. Whether out in the desert or integrated into the very buildings that make up our city skylines, gravity-based energy storage is uniquely versatile. And that versatility also applies to the size and scale of the storage tower itself. SOM is now discussing the possibility of building tower structures as high as one kilometer. But crossing the thousand meter barrier would be a huge leap upwards, even for them. 
Building a one-kilometer storage tower is more than just technically impressive, however, it is also a functional decision. There's a lot of benefits to that. So since it's gravity, the higher you go, the actually the more benefit you get, and you can get into storage capabilities well above a gigawatt hour, depending on the height. The two key factors that determine how much energy can be stored are mass and height. The heavier the loads, the more energy. The greater the height, the more energy. And of the two, height is the bigger lever. Doubling the height of a gravity-based energy tower doubles the amount of energy it can store, while using approximately the same amount of land at its base. If we were to do a one kilometer version of our gravity energy battery, it would be the tallest man-made structure in the world. That would allow us to store 1.7 gigawatt hours of electricity, uh, which would be enough to power a medium-sized city. And again, we can store that every single day. In cities where land is scarce and expensive, going vertical multiplies energy per square meter. This is arguably the core of SOM's value add. They can translate that physics advantage into an architectural advantage. A footprint the size of a small plaza can be turned into a device that load shifts power for entire districts. And unlike dams, these towers don't need valleys, rivers or years of environmental mitigation. You can site them close to demand, next to a data center campus, within an industrial park or in the most ambitious concept as the structural core of a new skyscraper. Yet, despite their novelty, these new towers might be possible to construct with remarkable speed solving yet another problem that has plagued renewable energy storage for years. One of the really brilliant things about what we're doing is the speed to market. So um, because of the simplicity of the tower form, uh, we're thinking about using slip form techniques of construction, which are used for cores uh, in tall towers. With slip form construction, the form work creeps upwards continuously, about 25 centimeters per hour roughly six meters per day. In practice, that means the vertical shaft of a 300 meter tower could rise in just a few months. Meanwhile, the lower charging zone can be built in parallel. The big engineering challenge is the upper charging zone. Large volumes of water at a great height is not something you can produce with a mere snap of the fingers. Even still, Semmel and his colleagues at SOM seem strikingly optimistic. They believe they can build a tower in 18 to 24 months. The tower design is versatile, practical to build, solves numerous problems currently holding back the renewable energy field, and may even produce the first buildings to cross the one kilometer barrier. We've developed technologies uh, with a special fabric to actually hold the water within the buildings. And then basically it's a lot of standard material that just like in pumped hydro that the water will you know, go down essentially special pipes down the side of the building and then have it be recirculated back to the top. This is far from some disposable gadget. It's sturdy infrastructure. The concrete and steel tower itself can last for decades or even a century. Meanwhile, the active parts, pumps, pipes, turbines, generators are off the shelf and with routine maintenance could run for approximately 50 years. Unlike, say, a large lithium battery farm, a gravity tower doesn't wear out with cycling and can hold energy without meaningful self-discharge. When you spread costs across the projected decades of use, the total cost per unit of energy delivered is quite competitive. Though versatile, the earliest physical iterations of SOM and Energy Vault's partnership will likely be built in places with a potent mix of sun, wind, land, and an increasing AI and industrial load. We're looking at opportunities in the United States, focusing on the Southwest, uh, places like Texas, Arizona, and California. Um, we're also looking um, abroad at the Middle East, as well as South America. So, when will the first tower be ready? For now, we'll have to be patient. At the time of filming, no contract has been signed and no delivery date has been set. It's difficult to imagine towers even smaller ones being built before 2030. It all depends on the size of the tower, but construction could take between two and five years for a one kilometer tower at an estimated cost of over a billion dollars. Nevertheless, this solution proposed by SOM and Energy Vault 
heralds a whole new type of building and a way of integrating the energy transition into the skyline itself. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed this special episode and we look forward to covering further developments in the Gravity Tower space in future episodes. We'd also like to give a special thanks to Adam Semmel and Robert Picconi for taking the time to discuss this exciting project with us. Please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. That's all for now. We'll see you next time on Looking For.